welcome to the open source intellectual course in this course what we're going to learn is how to use openly available internet, uh, data to build intelligent reports So I know you follow Master of Business Analytics course. So as a Master of Business Analytics student, you must learn how to use data to make useful reports. So you are using data that belongs to your business, or maybe the data you purchase from some organizations. Or else you can use the data locally available. So you might think about this data. So right now, you may not have any idea about those data. After following this course, you will learn, you will learn how to use those data, how to gather this data, obviously, first and then how to analyze those data and use this data to make meaningful business reports or maybe to make this data present this data in the way you need so let's look at the communities who require communities who require uh, these uh, data or open source intelligence domain or intelligent domain mainly. So you know when you discuss on the intelligent domains, there are different communities. In the top level will be government. Government means the intelligent information about their citizens or about the companies, organizations, and the information about other countries. And then military. The military need intelligence. They, they have different units which collect intelligence and law enforcement, other community which require intelligence. And obviously business to compete with each other, with other competitive business entities, each business needs to gather intelligence about the others. The academics, media, obviously civil societies, and maybe persons like individuals sometimes need to collect intelligent information to make our decisions. So in order to make those decisions, we need to build intelligence. Intelligent building, we need information. <coughs> so those information, as I mentioned, comes from maybe from some companies. Maybe you purchase those information. Maybe you can gather those information yourself. So in general, when we discuss about intelligent disciplines, so people in the world discuss different kind of intelligent disciplines. So major discipline is human intelligence. So as you are aware, countries, military, have their own units to collect information about humans. 
So they may be used humans to collect intelligence against humans. So intelligent agency like CIA so, and in Sri Lanka CID or maybe some other intelligent units available. So they collect information about humans. If humans collect information about humans, so it's human intelligence. This term, basically, we call it as human intelligence. Then we have geofacial intelligence discipline. So in this discipline, we gather information to make intelligent reports use on geographical images, like satellites. So you know, various countries has their own satellites to make aerial images about countries. Some aerial images are very powerful, even using those images, they can even see humans or any small objects located in the earth. So using such satellite aerial images or other aerial images, building intelligent reports, we call it as geofacial intelligence. Then there is a discipline, call it as sig signal intelligence. In the signal intelligence, we gather the intelligence by intercepting of communication links or by intercepting of any other kind of signals. So for example, so people you know talked about each other using mobile phones, telephones, or using maybe internet. If someone intercepts those and listen to those communications and kind of build reports about what they talk to each other, that comes under signal intelligence. So you know, in the world, there are tapping devices available, what you call telephone tap, web taps, mobile phone taps, different technologies available. And maybe in some cases, people might use hidden cameras, in microphones to record what the people talks about. So if you kind of intercept communication, it comes under communi communication intelligence, this is a subdomain of signal intelligence. So like telephone tapping, it's a communication intelligent technology. So if you kind of like a hide a mic in some room and record what some other people talk about. So that is also comes under signal intelligence. Subdomain is electronic intelligence. You collect the signals between humans using an electronic form. So video surveillance cameras, for example, records very actions, activities, sounds, pictures. So later on, you might see those and find it out, a lot of information. People passing around them, and maybe people work around and things like that. So those comes under electronic intelligence or e in domain. And that is a subdomain of signal intelligence. So in general, we call it as signal intelligence. It has two subdomains, communication and electronic intelligence. 
there is a term in paradise, technical intelligence. In the technical intelligence domain, we collect the information in different technical, it's in different technical methods. So it's kind of vague area. We can we can we can define it like any technical means maybe uh, cameras, webs, uh, different devices. In other words, if you use any technology or modern technology to spy on the people, that comes under technical means. Then finite. Financial intelligence. Financial intelligence is the discipline we build the intelligence about financial information. So you, you use financial information such as bank transactions and the kind of other financial monetary information to do to make financial intelligence. So for example. So people do kind of like, for example, I will take a simple example, like, so when you withdraw some money from our ATM machines, so you print the receipt. When you buy something from the supermarket using your credit card, you get the receipt. So you just throw those receipts. And someone collect those. So using those receipts, someone can make intelligence. So for example, in the ATM machine in a bank, especially the banks put a dustbin and ask you to drop your receipt to them. If you drop that into the dustbin, and maybe let's say some end of the day someone collect those dustbins. It has a lot of financial information. So those financial information tells about the details about bank accounts and the account holder names and the transactions about its balance. So those comes out of financial intuition. So we can build the information about or the reports about their financial data, people's or the organization's financial data by looking at those information. So that comes under you know, financial intelligence. So as you see, for those intelligent disciplines, some people give information about themselves Voluntary. In some intelligent domains, disciplines, so the officers collect that intelligence using different technologies and using different legal and illegal methods. And the people who work on the intelligent domains, they don't care about legality of gathering those information. They try to gather the information to make intelligence as much as possible as any as using any possible mechanisms. So then where is open source intelligence comes in? Open source intelligence is us to gather and produce the intelligence using openly available resources. In most cases, OSIM people, or what you call it as open source intelligence people, are not illegally collecting this information, or they are not kind of breaking into your servers, or they are not kind of threatening you and ask those information, no. 
So the people works in asymptote, collect the information by using freely available tools, open available tools. So the people give the information about themselves to the public without thinking those details may use by the people who gather the intelligence. Who are the people who gather the intelligence? I discussed at the beginning. Maybe government officers, military people, maybe your competitors, or anyone who interested on your side. Gather the information about yourself. Or sin discipline, they gather the information from different places where you have volunteered to give those information. So like humans, we, we left phrases or we left information about our life, about our activities in different places, different locations, in different means. Also, people are kind of smart enough to collect those information from different places and correlate them to produce actionable intelligent reports. This area started, actually, also, this area started not because of computer science. It started very long time ago. History of Austin go to 14th, 13th century when people start printing books. People start printing books and start doing publications. They lacked information. So those books publicly available, anyone can buy this. Any articles, any papers, publish on those. Publish on those days. Can use to find out different information. So for example, let's say there is an article about a person in a newspaper published and available to the public. So anyone can get it and read about them. So that article might have the birthday and age and where this person lives. So if someone interested in to find it out, my age, for example, so it can be obtained from that article. So somewhere in 80s and 14th century, so governments and different intelligence gathering people users, publicly available newspapers and books to collect intelligence. So that is the start of OSINT, or what we call it as open source intelligence. After OSIN started such a long way ago, so the life of OSIN as an analytic or OSIN people get much easier when electronic media comes into the society. Then as you know, multimedia, TV channels, radio channels started somewhere in 90s or 90s, 80s century. So then, not only from these newspapers, also in people start gathering intelligence from the TV, radio channels, and different other multimedia sources. So they are public. So for example, if there is a radio channel broadcasting, and tells about some stories, tells about some uh, one, some person. So if the some person 
or the intel intelligent officer in interest on that person, he can listen to that radio channels and find it out his information, what he likes, where he lives, or any other. So like till internet started till 1994, the most popular the source of information gathering in the area of Austin is TV and radio channels. So in addition, cinemas and any other multimedia use. Plus, obviously, people use newspapers, articles, conference papers to find it out or collecting the information. So if someone found such information in those media is openly available and make actionable intelligent reports, that comes under OSINT. I think it's clear for you right now. So now we are living in the very connected, complex age. So with that, from 1994 to like in 2008, people start building new discipline called OSINT based on the internet. Because of that, after 2008, someone called us, when you call us in, so people prefer internet. So people say, if we use internet to gather intelligence, so then that's us in. Actually, it happens after kind of internet populated or after kind of 2018. Why? So now we are living in 2020. In the 2020, so the easiest and fastest ways to collect the information about any organization, person, or any object is the internet. So we don't need to listen hours for radio channels or the TV channels to get those information. Instead of, we can just search and get the information from the internet. So when you collect the information from any such intelligent source, you need to verify the validity of those information. So because so openly available information may have noise. They may have bogus data. Right? So after 2008, basically, OSIN defines in this way. So then we say, Open source intelligence is the information gathering from publicly available sources, including web-based communication and content, traditional mass media, geofacial information, geographical photos, any other public reports, professional, academic, and other conferences information. As you may understood, last four in the history is manual process. Now, it's also electronic process. So last four is linked to the first. So if you want to get a publication about the conference, you don't only need to find that book or the publication, printed conference book. So books, printed publications are on the electronic form. If you need to find it out, the information public, published on the popular newspaper, we don't need to find the printed newspaper on the National Archive Department or whenever place, library, no, we don't. We can just go to the web and search. We will find those news items available on the web because everything now in this age is computerized and in the electronic media 
coin, what you call that, ser servers, and interconnect through the internet. So open source intelligence, we can define in such a way, like gather the information from the internet. So in other words, we can say open source intelligence is the information gathering from the internet. So that's why somewhere around 2000, after 2008-10, people say OSINT is the discipline people gather information about people or the organization from the publicly available information on the web. So that's why, that's the thing we're going to learn in this course. As you may understood, open source intelligent techniques not only used by the intelligent officers, it's used by the hackers or the bad guys. So hackers also practice or are active participants of this open source intervention or syndrome. So kind of smart hackers, they are using social engineering to hack into your systems and the servers rather than technical tools. So if you are a smart person, source using social engineering is much, much easier to break into some system rather using a technical tool. So I will do when move on about some lectures about social engineering. In order to give you an idea how open source intelligence used by a hacker. So I'll take an example of password cracking. So you know if I want to crack a password of someone else, there are password cracking tools available. So I can run those cracking tools, wait for days, maybe months, to crack someone's password that depend on the strength of the password. But a but smart person may not use such password cracking tools. Instead, they use social engineering methods to break into your account. How? As you might know, most of the servers or most of the services has option called forget password. So in order to recover those forget passwords, sometimes they have password recovery questions. So those password recovery questions are about your school name, your birthday, your favorite sports, your NIC number, or maybe your pet name, where do you live 10 years ago, and so on. Can't we get the answer for those questions from the internet itself? We can, because most of us are in social media websites. There we tell about our favorite stories. There we talk about our birthday parties. There we talk about the school we attended. So if someone interests, on break my Google account. And if Google asks, for example, Google asks my birth date and my school and my favorite sport as a password recovery question. So you can get the answer for all those three. Just running a query about myself on the internet. Google itself. Google itself tells about what I'm interested in, where I'm live, where, where did I attend the school? So then 
you can use those and recover my passwords and reset it to something else. So this is source, open source intelligence. So that is, this is how hackers and to use or same tools or same techniques to their advantage. So in this course, I will teach you as a regular people, how do you protect yourself against such or same attacks as well. Right. Move in use or sync for their usage. So we can see five step process. In the first stage of or sync is to identify the sources. In other words, where you can find the information about your target. So obviously, in the OSIN domain, let's say you are an officer or you are a person who wants to collect in, or who wants to create an intelligent report, then you must have a target. So, to whom or which person you are targeting on, or which organization, or which country is your target. So after you get the task with your target, so then you start a same process to build intelligent reports about your target. So then first thing you have to do when you get the target, you need to identify the sources where you can collect the information about your target. So this identification of sources, we have to do carefully. Most of the time, so now main source is the internet. It becomes the source, kind of. The area, the age we live, internet, it's the source of collecting OSINT information. Because of that, so in the identification of the stage, you need to find it out which internet websites I am using, which internet services I am using to gather information about this people, whether I am using email, this email, or maybe to use this uh, social media or Facebook or Twitter site, or maybe use his uh, homepage, or whatever. So you have to clearly identify the source of publicly available information about your target. Right. Then, in the second stage, you should harvest the information. In other words, in the second stage, you have to collect the information. How do you collect the information? On the internet? The simple tool you have to collect the information about or from the internet is searching. So I'll discuss today there are three types of web services available. We call it as surface, deep, and dark web. So you have to search all these three places. Searching is the simple tool where we can harvest information or collect the information. Not only searching, there might be different other ways available to collect this information. So when you collect those information, sometimes those information may be protected or encrypted. So then you should have an idea about how to break those and make or decrypt. So some of these information some people might think store in a private phone. So then you have to find it out a way to get this from this 
private form to an open form. So anyway, even encrypt or private, they are openly available. That means they are available on the internet. Anything available in, to the internet is openly available, so it comes under open source internet. Awesome. So, so after identifying the sources, you need to find the tools to grab the information. So usually we tell us, when you grab in the information, we collect everything. We collect every possible information. Right. After harvesting, we go into the stage, what we call it as data processing. So as a process intelligence students, you know, master students, you know how to do data processing. So basically it comes under clearing of your data. So you have to organize the data you collected in kind of intelligent form by removing noises, unwanted data, right? That is data processing. After you process this data, you are entering into analysis flex, data analysis flex stage. Data analysis stage. So in the analysis stage, you are obviously, you know, you learn different algorithms, different models to analyze the data. So the data you collected now can put it into the mathematical algorithms you learn and then correlate those statistically or using other machine learning technologies to to get the meaningful records. So obviously in the last stage of the process is reporting. So then you create the report about your task. Right? So same process start from the identifying resources, identifying the sources, harvesting, processing, analyzing, and reporting. So for example, in some cases, so maybe we identify our resources like blog websites, social network websites, podcast, and so on. So a lot of resources we might identify at the beginning. So then you have to, after identifying your resources, you have to collect the information from all of these resources. So then collecting, you might get huge set of information. And then you have to spend some time to cleaning this out, processing those information. Remove unwanted data and put that data, label that data and things like that comes under processing. So then it moves to analysis. So then you apply the algorithms you learn, mathematical methods, models, you analyze those information. As a result of that, you get the Austin report. So you so it's a big process with five steps. So you start with huge amount of data to make the targeted report about a person or organization or some other interesting object. So that's also about also and its process. So when you work in this awesome area, the most challenging part is the collecting the information. So you need to 
collect the information from the openly available sources. So they are, I said, most of the time on the internet. So that, so there are hundreds, thousands of the tools are available on the internet, free tools sometimes, sometimes paid tools. So the bad news in this area is actually these tools obsolete really, really fast due to change of technologies. As you know, web building technologies and communication protocols and storage technologies change rapidly. So maybe 10 years ago, most of the communication are plain. Now most of the communications are encrypted. The tools use plain text to collect the information cannot use now. So, so maybe five years ago, Facebook used a technology called graph API. So people use that to collect the information from the graph API. Facebook closes down three years ago. So the tools based on this graph API is get obsolete now. So the data collection tools in this area obsolete really, really fast. So if you purchase some tools for OSINT, so you should know that works, maybe it works only for a few months, or maybe it works only for one or two years, not more than that. Because of technology changes, because of API changes from different websites, and so on. So, because of that, even though we say or think it's very interesting area, keep staying in this area and collecting data <clears throat> from the sources are not so straightforward. However, the good news is even the change, even some data or tools, sources changes really fast due to the technology improvements. There are some tools, technologies not change or the tools, technologies which has kind of stable, stable things. So in this course, I mostly focus on these stable things. So because if you learn about those, that may stay for a long period of time. So that knowledge you can use for maybe at least four or five years rather than a few months. For example, so OSINT people should know about fundamentals of information security. Unfortunately, this master program, we don't have such fundamental of information security course. So we thought of giving the fundamentals within the this course itself. So example. So let's say you want to collect the information which is stored in the kind of protected form, or you want to collect the uh, financial information, maybe about they are usage of cryptocurrencies because most of the days people, especially our target is a bad guy. 
So they use cryptocurrencies to do bad things. So then we need to collect the intelligent information about cryptocurrencies. So they are, you should know how cryptocurrency works. Let's say you collect, we want to collect the information about uh, Facebook, social media, Facebook. So Facebook now change their graph API and do some kind of encryption and encoding to store the information. Unfortunately, still those information can be obtained if someone knows about those cryptographic algorithms. So in order to learn how to do that, you should know about those mathematical cryptographic algorithms or in other words, foundations of security. Then search engines. Search engines, we have a set of search engines for now years, they are not rapidly changed. So those search engines, we could use to collect the information. So learn about those search engines and how it works and how to execute advanced search are then useful. So we teach about that also in the course. Then obviously social media, they change their APIs and so on, but the tar source websites are kind of fixed like Facebook, Twitter, and things we, we chat and things like that. All right. Then dark web. And they're a good place of collecting information. Okay, we talked about those interaction today, but we will discuss in detail when we move on in this course. Starting from cryptography. So that anybody who follow this course should know about these things. So hashing, symmetric encryption, symmetric encryption, key distribution for the course and about cryptocurrencies. So maybe there are different hashing algorithms for SHA, MD5, SHA256 and so on. What hashing and how it works, you should know. Don't worry, I will teach. Then obviously, symmetric key algorithms, which we use to protect the information. This and A, yes, are the algorithms we will learn how it works. Asymmetric key algorithms, RSA, elliptical, and move on to the cryptocurrencies and intelligence gathering on cryptocurrencies. You should learn know about those. So we will teach. And key distribution protocols, TLS and TOR, TOR networks, how it works, you have to know. Otherwise, you blindly depend on a tool. If that tool get obsolete in few months, you are helpless. If you know how it works, if one tool get obsolete, at least you can write your own tool. Then cryptocurrency, obviously Bitcoin, Ethereum, how it works, what is decentralized web? And how do you collect the information from that? So that you have to know the theories behind it. Or you have to know the, how, how those algorithms work. So if you know about this foundation, so you are not blindly depend on a tool. As I mentioned, in the bad news on this discipline is the tools obsolete really fast. The good news in the, this discipline is the foundation is fixed. So if one tool once works, you have an option of building your own tool. So that's the best thing in this domain or this discipline. Collecting the information. 
so that first thing you have to identify understand about the web and mainly on the web there are three types of web we can see we call them as surface web deep web and dark web So when you say web, everybody actually see the surface web. So Google see the surface web in other words. So we see the surface. Since Google see the surface web, so we see the surface web. But deep web is much larger. How do you obtain the information about from that? And then obviously dark web. We don't have any idea about its size, even. Can we get the information about that? Really, most of the valuable information which require in this intelligent gathering domain available in the dark web, not the surface web. So then you have to know how to collect that from the dark web. surface web. Actually, we see the surface web. It's a small, people believe it's a very, very tiny segment of the web. Maybe 10%, maybe maximum 20% of the entire information which can obtain in the surface web. So we usually tell surface web is not bad. Kind of secure. Obviously, that is not the majority of the source of collecting the information. But e this is the easiest starting point of gathering information in the about the targets, because all the search engines are indexed. Surface web are indexed by all the search engines. Then, deep web. Some researchers say 94% about the content on the web is under deep web. That the content on the deep web is good content or the bad content? We have years and no, most of the time, maybe yes, but maybe no as well. <clears throat> Is that content securely stored, cannot obtain easily? Yes, most of the time they are securely stored. Obtaining information from the deep web, not so easy, like obtaining them from the dark web, so from the surface web. Because in the surface web, we can directly get those information using search engines. But in the deep web, no. What is the deep web? Any information which protected using username passwords and the deep web. So for example, you have an email account, Gmail account. So in order to access this Gmail account, you have to give a username and a password. So the people who knows about your username and the password can collect the information from your Gmail account or from your Gmail box. So you might think about and say, yeah, so my username and password only knows by me. So then how about this comes under us? How about these tools collect those information? Simple answer for that is you voluntarily give. You voluntarily give rights. So sometimes you might use your Gmail login to some, some other website. So if you give access or use your same login information to access some other websites, you have to grant some rights to that website. 
So that website, not in that, that you give a permission to get some of your personal information to that website. I'll take an example even during the lecture today. So then that website might give those information free, open. So that's under processing then. Even information about in the deep web usually get laid to the surface, right? So we can get it. So, oh, there are some tools where basically can directly collect information under deep web. So usually we tell over 90% of the information stored in the deep web. What is the dark web? Maybe you heard about people's talks on dark web in the movies, YouTube videos, that you may not have any experience on dark web. So if you continuously watch the videos or the lectures, in this course, you will get hands on experience on dark web. How to set up such dark web website, then how to search on those dark web websites, and obviously to gather information from the dark web website to be learn. The content of these secure years, they use a lot of cryptographic tools, technologies, protocols to protect their content. That's why they are in the dark. That's why regular people are not aware about this content. Only the group of people, only the thugs, underworld people, drug dealers, they know us very well. So if you are into a symptom or discipline, you should know how these people put this information to the dark. So we have to take that information from dark to the light in order to be analyzed. How much information available in the dark web? Speaking, we don't know because it's in the, it's a, like iceberg. We only see a small person. Uh, size, small thing out of the sea. A lot of the information under the sea, under the dark web. So if you are a professional in this domain, you should know how to gather that from the dark web. How to gather that from the dark web. So hold on, we will teach in this course. As I mentioned a few times, even the lecture today, search engine is the major tool we use in OSIN domain because we can start collecting the information by executing search queries on popular search engines. So any information which exposed to the surface web get indexed by those search engines. Because of that, you can run a query on those search engines to get this information. However, you should be know the tricks, methods, theories to run those queries efficiently. Otherwise, you get a lot of garbage as you understood. So in order to hit the needful, correct information, you should have a knowledge about how to do advanced search on those search engines.
So major search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo, they have those advanced search operators provided. So in the Google, it's called that Google Docs. So I will do a separate lecture in this course, how to use the search engines to gather information. So SIN professional should look at those information in all the angles, not only the angle of Google want to see. Have you heard about the index? So it's a, some other search into search engines. So if you search some target on Google and Yandex, so it's completely two different reports. Where the Google see is the way US wants, where the Yandex see is the way Russia wants. So it's the Russia, Yugoslavia, I like scan. Russian country based search engine. So maybe you don't have about nerd data, nerdy data, whatever. And Amiya. So maybe you don't have heard about those search engines. Maybe one called Duck Duck Search. I don't think you are you have knowledge about those. So so if you are a profession of OSIN you should master searcher, not only Google, Bing, Yahoo, but also on Yardex, Nerdata, Amiya, like search engines. Yandex is similar to the popular other search engines, but they index in different way. So if you search on Yandex, you need to be careful. So that gives you all underworld links and the world means all porn sites, drug sites, malicious activities, like that. So you need to be very careful if you use Yandex. Because they give everything openly, but Google filter out. As you know, Google filter out and give decent content to you. But you are also in professional, you need not only these and things, you especially need other things as well. So then Yandex is the alternative. Then nerd data, search and source books. So if you are also in profession and want to look at software, all the kind of uh, information where Google not indexed, then you sh should go to NERD. So for example, the popular search engines, they are only indexed, then the index based on the data available on the web page. So if there are JavaScripts, HTML tags, so those things, they filter it out while they are building the indexes. But no data index the web based on the things which is not used by popular other search engines. In other words, they search based on the JavaScript, PHP scripts, HTML tags, and so on. There is another search engine I don't include, they are called Soda. So they build the search index based on devices. Then I have Amiya. Mia is a search engine for dark web because dark web content may not accessible by the Google. So if you want to collect information from dark web, you go you have to go to Amia search engine. So hold on. I will start teaching with foundations cryptography stuff and then move to search engine and we'll tell you how to search on those search engines. So this is Amiya. So if you go to this website and search, you may not be able to get the content. So there is a way to do so. Hold on.
will tell you later on. Then social media or the social network. So even we like or not, so Facebook is most popular social network website. They had they actually expose all our personal information to the whole of the world till somewhere 2018. So through their indexing mechanism, call it as graph search. So anyone can execute a search in using their graph search tools on the Facebook database and obtain all of our personal information. So fortunately, they have closed that graph API recently. After they closed that graph API, most popular or sync tool were obsolete. Even the I said, most sync tools uh, used by some intelligent organization, even in Sri Lanka, they go to obsolete. So they, those tools can use because Facebook changed the API. Now, those in communities are closely monitoring what Facebook is doing and try to understand the way now they execute or build or open the APIs to the public. So, OSIN people believe still they can obtain information, not in the direct way, but using some cryptography algorithmic methods. So if you are interested, you can visit the graphs.tips website to learn about it, but I think you may not understand what they explain on those because you don't have foundation about information security. Don't worry, after I give foundation, after we introduce the search engines, I will introduce you in a separate lecture, how to use those advanced search on the Facebook, <coughs> still possible, similar to Twitter. Twitter also restrict their APIs. So previously anyone can obtain access to their Twitter API and search on their content. But in the Twitter, it's different than Facebook. In the Twitter, every tweet is public. So then why we need API? So if everything is public, we can search and get those information. So some people has built different tools to that. One is Twitter. So the OSINT tools, which works by using Twitter API, now obsolete in most of the tools because Twitter changed their policies due to the heavy cause or due to the pressure from the public saying you are exposing our private country to the people. So because of that giants like Facebook and Twitter has to close or to make strict security, not to expose those private information. But unfortunately, OSIN community knows how to get it, still, still it's possible. So we'll show you how to use Twitter or tweeting to gather OSIN information when we move on without using any Twitter API. So then there are various other tools available, works, technologies available. To gather OSINT information. When university opens in next month or in October or September, somewhere. So I will conduct some hands on sessions and we'll take some use cases and so show you how much information can be obtained about a person 
just using searching and the online tools. So one interesting machine tool is mapping tool, Google Map or Google Earth. That pinpoint a person's house, any place, you can find it out, any organization, where they locate, where they are branches. How do they transport in fifteen? So they are publicly available information now. So in long time back they are not. Now it's publicly available. So not only where they live, your phone numbers also publicly available. So one example is true call. So true call is an application which leaks deep web data to the surface web. So for example, if you use Google and your Android phones, so it. Android phones use Google account, and that Google account has your account contact address book, address information, contact information. If you want to log into a TrueCaller or if you install a TrueCaller app on your phone to find it out, the caller ID or the caller name, because that's interesting. Because if you sometimes you get uh, maybe unwanted calls and you. Won't, so those call numbers are not available in the contact book. Because of that, you have to know about who are the caller. So then maybe you ask, you are using true call. But this true caller is smart enough. While you are installing that app, true caller app, they get your consent to access your Gmail contact book. So with that, they have built three billion phone number database. So which has almost all phone numbers of the people. So if you just type the phone number, they let it use the caller name. Actually, it's not the real name of the caller, the most popular nickname of the caller. That's more useful than the real name. So it's more useful to know how other people call you rather than the name in your birth certificate or a person person. So we will talk about that when you move on and you can get experience on how it works. Then there are different websites which interconnect webcams in the world. So one, one is called Earthcam. So it has thousands of webcams connected. So you know everywhere there are like surveillance cameras. So people can go to such websites and link their surveillance cameras to this network. We don't know who links which one. So if someone makes that, so someone else in the world might be watching it. So we don't know how many people are watching it and searching it. So for OSIN paper, this is a very useful resource. So if you have time, go and visit, but I will have hands on sessions coming on in this course about this. Then flight information. So go to flight radar. So you might see a lot of flight information. No one can hide. So everybody will see where these flights are and when this flight get landed. So It is also a very useful resource. How to collect information from such resources? You will learn. So you have to patiently follow this course.
So this is about flight. Then how about maritime traffic? So maritime traffic also publicly available. So we can see where these tankers are there, any passenger ships, any big fishing boats, their location, their movements. And when they are, where they are heading to, and their types, all those details are often available. So a simple person that is very useful, then we know those details. Then we know which fishing boat, where they go, where they catch the fish. If you have a target fishing boat, where we don't burn to trace, we can trace that from the beginning to the end, just using a simple website like this. The problem is, so we have huge set up, set of tools, APIs, but still the people who should aware about it are not aware about those tools. So if you are using those tools, correlated information, people, shipping boards, flights, video cameras, then think about, and then to the dark web, think about, can't we find it out drug trafficking? Can't we find it out human trafficking? Legal human migration? We can. So in order to do that, we don't have single tool, but based on our requirements, we need to combine those sources and we need to kind of learn how these tools really collect those information. Then we can have our own tools then. So if that website can do this map, can't we do it? We can do it as well. Because they build this using OSINT, openly available information. So most of the time. Sometimes they might purchase, obviously, from information from some sources. So either we have built the tools to collect the information from Internet, or either we can pay these websites and get those information. So someone might ask if we pay such website and get the information, whether they can categorize and also. But my personal view is yes, we can. Why? Because we pay actually to these companies because they give us the data after cleaning or we give, they do collect the data and then process it to a meaningful method. And then we, they present it from the meaningful method like latitude, longitude, and this fish lo uh, ship location. So they collect the information from openly available sources and they process it and as an OSINT analyzing person can actually pay for this processing part and get that, but still that information source from openly available data. So then we start our investigation, not from the collecting, we start from directly from analysis because we, we pay these companies and get the data, we get the data from the clean data or process data. So because of that, we, this is still a sent, still a sent idea. Finally, so if you want to collect information about, let's say, 
regular channels like TV stations, maybe radio stations. So TV stations are most of the TV stations since they are videos through YouTube. And if you want to kind of follow some channels uh, through that, you could go to that YouTube or whatever other uh, resources, uh, video resources. They say you want to listen radios, radio channels to find it out some intelligent information. Can I listen to radio which broadcasts in Siberia? An FM radio broadcast in Russia. Can I listen to find some intelligent radio? Should I need to go to Russia to do so? No. So you visit this website, Radio Garden. They, they, they connected. Millions of radios all over the world into one single interface. So you just look here and tune and listen live stream. So for any intelligent purpose, let's say you want to record those, so you can record. If you want to analyze those, you can analyze. So how did Radio Garden get that thing? Because these radio channels, they feed that publicly to this Radio Garden. So those channels, then radio channels, if they talks about any personal information or any programs, which about personal information, then that goes publicly and accessed by the people from the internet, from anywhere from the world. So in some investigations, that might also be useful. So you see, very interesting subject, which basically has give you basically gives very practical applications and uh, experience. So in as so far in your business analytics master, you might learn a lot of theories and mathematical equations and so on. So obviously OSIN also need to use them, but I present this course in the different angle. So where you will get access to a lot of interesting tools, technologies, plus theories. So then you get your same first information. So by following this, so the other and other other objective of this course is to teach you to kind of get get out, get rid of those internet. So in other words, so maybe, so you don't want to expose some of your personal information uh, to those in professionals. So then by following this course, you will learn how to do that as well. So maybe, as a practice, as a start. So you can visit the websites where I just I highlighted a few of them at the first lecture and then search on your name. Then try to find it out how much information you have voluntary given you. And also you will learn not only you, your friends, your families, your kind of your organization has exposed a lot of private information, personal information about you to those private websites or to the public. Your private information has exposed by your relatives, families, to the public without your knowledge. You can understand that as well. So by following this course, the one objective is 
to teach you not to do that, to teach you how to kind of cover yourself from those tools. So as I mentioned, so we will we now start this course with giving the introduction. So next time we'll give you a few foundation lectures about to tell you the theory about hashing, symmetric key, asymmetric key, encryption, and then security protocols such as TLS and TOR. So then you know how this data stores and transit in between. After that, I will directly go to searching and teach you this Google Docs and other advanced search options. And how to search on surface, deep and dark web to collect the information. Then I move to social media and tell you how to obtain information from Twitter and Facebook. So then I will discuss about how to protect your privacy yourself against those tools and how to stay anonymous on the internet. We will discuss. And then obviously I will teach you on how cryptocurrency works and if you use cryptocurrencies, how the open source intelligent people, OSINT people, get about your transactions. So we, like that, there is a long journey to go. So every long journey starts with small step, as you know. So you start, as I said, so create, you create a report. Try to create a report about you. Just using Google. So I will post the activity to the LMS asking you to do that. They are, you just use Google as you know how to use it, as simple. So I will show you how to use it in advanced forms. But So I just want to everybody do a small search on Google and create a report about you. Simple report. Then you can maybe if you submit that reports saying about yourself. If that report has any private confidential, if report comes with any private confidential data about you, obviously you can remove those from the report. But I just want to everybody to use the URLs I just exposed from this introduction lecture. So I would like to like everybody use that and see whether in very simple form whether your information is accessible without your knowledge to the people or same people. Okay. Till that, you go to Radio Garden and tune the interesting radio channel you would like to listen. Listen the music from anywhere from the world. Relax and start following the OSINT course. Thank you very much for listening so far. So we'll meet you back with other interesting lecture as soon as possible.